we're here at Zildjian Live season three. Two. Uh, <laughs> yikes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm foreshadowing. Right. One more time. I'll, I'll it's a prophet. See, he's away. He's away. We're here at Zildjian Live Season 2 uh, with none other than New York's finest, Marcus Gilmore. <laughs> yes, sir. Pleasure Thank to you. have you here. Thank you. Dude, so let me start with this. I, I don't know if people know this, but man, drumming is in your veins. Your grandfather is a legend, Mr. Roy Haynes. What was it like uh, growing up in such a musical heavy family? You know, it's it's really just, um, well, it's all I've ever known. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's always been my reality, but I didn't realize how, how deep it was until I got a little bit older though. Mm -hmm. When I was really young, I mean, pretty much all of the elders in my immediate family were musicians. Crazy. My parents, my uncles, my grandfather, so it was just, it was everywhere, you know? It was everywhere. My parents had a gospel group together back in the day. And then my uncle was playing drums with Sun Ra. And then wow. like my other uncle was playing cornet with like all these like electronic musicians and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, and then my grandfather, you know, he was the king of the family. <laughs> you know, he's like king, king of a lot of people. <laughs> but, for sure. I but mean, yeah. just a heavy influence for so many people, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, just a, a crazy blueprint that so many people are still following today. It's incre it's, it's insane. So, man, so I, I don't I, I'm not gonna dig too heavy. Um, you know, word on the street is that you know before you were this uh, this this drumming lion, you were also a, a vocalist. You were singing, huh? You wanna talk about it? <laughs> huh? Do you want to get into it? Do you want to you want to you want to show the people what you're working with? Uh, I ain't working with so much no more. <laughs> Those days have come and gone, you know. But I used to sing in the choir. You know, yeah, I used to get, I used to get yeah. in. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, you know, I wasn't necessarily, I wasn't necessarily like a crazy soloist okay. or anything like that. Okay, but, but you know, are, I did what I had to do. I do. But I tell you, you are a crazy drummer. <laughs> oh, for thanks, sure. Man. And it's, it's so, um, it's awesome watching you play and your ideas, the way you express yourself. Um, I got a chance to check you out in uh, in Holland. Oh, and right. I was at front of house and I was oh, right, watching right. you play and listening to you from front of house. And I kept hearing some unique, unnatural stuff, hi-hat stuff that you were playing, to the point where I left the perch at front of the house and walked all the way up to the side of stage so I could watch you. Explain to me how you came up with this whole two hi-hat concept thing that you're doing. That, um, what well, the first thing that inspired me to have two hi-hats that are actually played by the foot, because you know, a lot, you would see a lot of people playing hi-hat yeah. and then one with the sticks, right? For sure. But the first time I ever heard the sound of two hi-hats being played with the foot was actually through a, re a recording of Milford Graves, wow. legendary Milford Graves, and it was a solo recording that he did, which I gotta, yeah, gotta I check this out, bro. You hit. gotta check this It sounds like five people. It sounds like a tribe. That's crazy. It's crazy, but I, and he's actually been a mentor of mine for wow. a few years now, but um, I asked him, I was like, what were you doing when you were recording? He's like, man, I had drums everywhere. <laughs> like, wow. ev like everywhere, like on top of my, like I had drums, e like stuff everywhere, it's crazy. Wow, that's crazy. But um, that was the first time I actually heard that sound. Yeah. That was like, when I heard that recording, that was probably like around 2011, mm -hmm. 2010 or something. Okay. Well, around that time I started doing two hi-hats, but one on the right side. Okay, right. But with the actual pedal though, because okay, I wanted I that you. sound. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, the two yeah. yeah. But, then, um, but then like a year or two after that, like around 2000, it must have been 2000, 12, 2013, mm -hmm. I was in Switzerland okay. at a, playing a gig with um, Gilad Hexelman, this great okay. guitarist. And we were um, with this, you know Stefan Deltum in Switzerland, this cat, yeah, he basically yeah, yeah, has a lot yeah, of drums yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, I was in one of his sheds, like he has all these drums around. And uh, instead of going for that sound with the two, with the right hand, the right, 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 yeah. right foot, left foot, mm -hmm. I went for the sound with the, uh, I, I went to see what it had, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause he had like a couple of highs together. And I was like, what happened? It was just like right over there. So okay. I was like, and that was the first time I heard it. But I. I did it for a while, and I was practicing with it for a while before I started gigging with it. Wow! Because I didn't, you didn't want, I didn't want to just do it for no reason. Yeah, 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 like I didn't want to do it for no reason. Got you. So I had to spend some time, like actually trying to figure out what the concept would be, like how I would use it. And then when I, and then I started using the zill bells around that same time, like mm -hmm. with hi hats. So I thought it would be cool if I could have like a, a very different sounding secondary hi hat mm -hmm. to go with it, with like a different kind of function, like gotcha. kind of playing. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, eventually I started playing gigs with it, but for a while I was just. In the crib. So, <laughs> just... so the zill bells that you're that you're using, mm -hmm. they're not the normal standard 
Zilbel, they are like they seem like they're treated or or something. Yeah. Is this something you worked on with Paul or? Well, so basically, so at that time I had already been playing with the regular Zilbels, mm -hmm. the regular brilliant looking right, Zilbels, the they're really ones, yeah. heavy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the big ones and the small ones. Okay. The big ones were really great for like louder ensembles. Like gotcha. If it's electronic or something like that, it yeah. was kind of cool because you had no problem getting that. Yeah. To, yeah. <laughs> no cool. problem. That's, yeah. That's cut through everything. Bing. Yeah. But. Um, so sometimes I would put stuff on top of it, okay. just to kind of like make it shorter, mm -hmm. and um, you know, kind of take down the volume like a couple of decibels or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the smaller ones, I remember they sounded great. But I remember at some point I ended up putting a lot of tape on them to make them drier. Gotcha. And then after a while, I was like, well, why, why wouldn't it be possible to just make some prototypes of these bells like mm -hmm. that are unlaced and like a little bit drier? Yeah. And then I was like, well, maybe we can make them thinner too, so that maybe the pitch would be a little bit lower. Wow. And then uh, and hammering, you know, yeah, different hammerings yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So there was one time I was going to the factory and I asked Paul, I was like, man, could you um, could you have uh, some like unlaid zilbos ready to like hammer up and stuff? And he was mm -hmm. like, okay. And I showed him like the videos and stuff I've been doing. And he was like, yeah. okay, cool, I see. So then he had them ready. And I was like, all right, let's try something different with each one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we had some that we would just like hammer, a pretty consistent hammering all around. Yeah. And then other ones like the ones that I have down there. The mm -hmm. top one has like four significant clusters. Okay. And it's a small symbol, so it's like a lot of hammer yeah, pool with sure. small symbol ones. Yeah. Is they they're like what a size are they eight? Well the the big ones are like around nine, but I think the prototypes that he gave me were like a little varied. Okay. okay. The typical Zillbells are nine and six. Okay, I got you. But I think these ones might be like nine ish and like six ish. Gotcha. Okay. Like seven. I don't know. So yeah 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 yeah. It's a little loose. I got I like loose I like loose stuff. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I like good. it. I like it. You know. <laughs> it doesn't have to be defined, yeah, you know yeah, like no 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 don't put me in the box. <laughs> yeah don't put me in the box. Keep it, keep it fresh, yeah, keep it open. Yeah. So yeah, we, we worked on that 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 day. Pretty much just worked on Zilbells and um, this other symbol that I started playing with. Dope. That that symbol, that brilliant symbol that I had at that gig. Yeah, yeah, Remember yeah. Remember that brilliant yeah, one that yeah, was hammered? Yeah, for sure. It was that and the Zilbells I worked on that yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was like, this the one that I see here today is different from that one that I remember right. that day. But they sound crazy, and the way that you're using them in between the stuff that you're playing, mm -hmm. bro, is really it's, it's unique. Thank you for sure. So I'm really glad that you're able to. Um, be a part of this whole thing so people can see that. Hopefully it'll spark some inspiration and uh, who knows what you know what'll come out of that. Right, right. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the event itself, like this whole Zildjian Live thing. Okay. Um, I've been very, like I said, super fortunate to have done it last year. And for a lot of us, it felt almost like um, an old school Zildjian Day, you mm -hmm. know, like uh, Zildjian Day in New York or Zildjian Day London, you know. Mm -hmm. um, What's been your experience so far, as far as like the, can you talk a little bit about the camaraderie with everybody that's here? Mm -hmm. um, it, to me, you know, it's it's so cool seeing everyone, um, cheering everyone on, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah it's pretty positive. Um, but then also, I want you to, can you speak to that? And then also, can you speak about the whole process of like this, uh, the event, getting the music from Spud, you know, how'd you come about your tune? Right. Yeah, it's pretty exciting, you know? Like you were saying, it's a, it's a pretty positive environment. Everybody's been super supportive and, and um, encouraging of one another. Um, you know, the drum community in, in general is pretty different from, I, I feel like, all the other instruments. Like, you know, I agree. The saxophone community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know how much of a community uh, there really is, but. Uh, they out there. <laughs> they're uh, scattered yeah, around, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Trumpet community. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if that's kazoo, yeah. Kazoo oh yeah, yeah well, there's a kazoo community. I'll, I'll hear there's about kazoo? that later. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, we'll talk about it later. Yeah, let me know. Let me <laughs> let me know. Um, I think that's just the nature of the instrument. It's just such it a is. powerful instrument. It always kind of brings people together. Yeah, definitely. It's the heartbeat, you know. It is. So it is. It's just that's just what it's gonna be, no matter what. It seems like that way, across a lot of different cultures, the drum has like a kind of unifying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. energy. For um, sure. But yeah, uh, so the process with this, with Spud, you know, Spud is like a, he's a very special individual. He is. <laughs> Multi-instrumentalist. Um, he came to me, you know, once I decided, once I said, okay, we can make this work, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. And then he was like, all right, so we're not meant to find out what we're gonna play. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, he was like, we can do, if you wanna play something in particular, you can bring in a tune of yours with an yeah. arrangement, or mm -hmm. you can bring in a tune, I can arrange it. Or we can write something together. He's like, or we can play one of my tunes and you just let me know. So right. it was pretty open. Yeah, Actually, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. So I was thinking about it, but I, I was doing, a, I was, and I'm still doing like a lot of writing at the time. Okay. So I was like, maybe I should just play one, something that yeah, you, yeah, because I'm have. doing, I'm, you know, doing, doing so much. I was like, let me just, you. he was like, okay, cool. So then um, he sent me 
some demos. Okay. Of stuff that had never been recorded. I guess he was just kind of thinking of something that he thought could Let's work see. for me. Got you. I've only known him for, for a few years now, but I feel like in that time, he's definitely seen me playing like different contexts mm -hmm. and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, he knows what's possible. Yeah. So, um, you know, he has some insight. So he sent me a several different clips. He sent me about, I think about four, okay. four different ones. He was like, which one works? And I was like, man, they all kind of could work. <laughs> they yeah, could all yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, let me go with this one. I kind of, okay. you know. Gotcha. Yeah, so when I met up with him, it was basically him kind of teaching it to the guys and then trying to figure out the form. Gotcha. Like how it would work out. So mm -hmm. we kind of figured out the A, B, C yeah. form, A, B, C mm -hmm. form, and then the ending, um, which we still kind of touched up a little bit just now. Yeah. The mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. Dope. That was good. Yeah, I didn't even call it. But that was supposed to be C, right? Yeah, it was supposed to be C. That was all on me. My bad. It felt good. The process was pretty easy for you. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty straightforward. With a guy like that, I think it's um, he made me feel comfortable. He's low key a genius. Yeah, he is. He is. You know, it's a lot of responsibility it, it, for it, one it, person. It, yeah. it really is. So I mean, yeah. definitely hats off to him. Salute him for you know, what he's done, but also for you guys to step in, um, it's a lot of pressure involved. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You have the pressure to represent yourself. Right. You have the pressure to represent, you know, the Zildjian brand, uh, and also pressure not to go down the flames. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so it's a- I don't want to know that. I don't want to know that. It's, it's, it's a lot, but I, I'll plan. tell you, but everybody, <laughs> man, has stepped up and has handled it so, so well. So I know tomorrow's gonna be <laughs> Absolutely inc incredible. I'm looking forward yeah. to seeing how, you know, the image is in the mm -hmm. room and, and watching people's eyes light up when they watch you play and your mm -hmm. soul and stuff. So it's going to be dope. Again, Marcus. Thanks. Marcus Gilmore, thank you so much, brother, for being here. Thank Thanks you. for being thank, a part of this. Thanks for having me, for real. Uh, man, what? For pushing oh. me towards doing this. Oh, oh man. man. For, it's about it, you it, like, yo, it, man, we're going to make this happen. I like. felt like it had, it had to happen. It, and for me, I, I was, you know, just happy that you were able to, to make time to do it. I know you got a lot going on with... You know, Pat Metheny and Chick Corea and you know so many other people, man, that you're rocking with and playing with in your own stuff. But for you to take time to do this, man, it means a lot for sure. Indeed, appreciate indeed. you, bro. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Much respect. Yeah, yeah. Second love, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I didn't get a chance to talk about his Grammys or how he's been on the road since he was 16 years old and <laughs> other <laughs> stuff, but uh, that's all right. We'll, we'll get it next time. <laughs> next time. Next time. Next time. Next time.